Yeah, I think the remix song. should be. Hey, <gasps> okay. Hey, 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 I'm Blair. And I'm Morgan. And we have the incomparable Tim Ross with us today. Hey, Ma. Thank you so much. Hey, Ma. Oh, what's hey, up? Hey, Ma. Okay, ready. What's hey. poppin'? <laughs> you know, we got a little Hey, Ma song, and you know, it's her and her daughter, Layla, singing our theme song. I do, it's yeah. It's so cute. We have a theme song. Yeah. yeah. We did a little play. Oh, I don't play know if we try to like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We are going to, you know, we'll tell you later. Like, but yeah, I think Tim the Ross remix song. should be Hey, Ma. <gasps> okay. So we just gonna strip this sound. Yes. We'll do it. We're gonna pay you with a thank you. Yeah. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah. I love that. Well, yeah. you know what? Let's just jump right into our game. So every episode, before we get into the nitty-gritty of conversation, we just okay. do a quick little icebreaker. Mm -hmm. It's called It's Giving Motherhood, but this one we're doing a rapid fire. Done deal. So I'm gonna give you some words. Yep. Blair's gonna give you some words. Mm -hmm. First word or phrase that comes to mind is what you say to us. We're doing an either or. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Yes, it is a this or that. I'm sorry. Okay, She's no like, worries. it's this or that. <laughs> um, but yes, it is a this or that situation. Okay. First word that comes to mind is what it is. Done. And oh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Done deal. All right. So share your food or order your own. Oh, order your own. Always. <laughs> you take the fries off your plate. No, yeah. absolutely. You should have got it. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Toilet paper goes over or under? Doesn't matter to me. Oh. I have wipes. Oh, he said I have wipes. Your butt Period. ain't clean unless you have wipes. <laughs> he Point is the dude period. wipes. Sponsor. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Sponsor. Oh, oh, quick. Quick sidebar. You know, <laughs> even flushable wipes, you're not supposed like, they're yeah, not to be flushed. Yeah, I know. Flushed. My toilet know, just I... got clogged from those. Oh, you got to have, like, Kleenex or something like that. Huggies won't do. That'll clog Huggies you in a minute. Huggies won't do. <laughs> yeah. Huggies wipes will clog everybody. Your wipes. septic system. Yeah, absolutely. Just, just information, if you didn't yeah. know. <laughs> Trying to give people life hacks. Yep. <laughs> Martin or Fresh Prince? Martin. All right. Mm. Father's Day or every day? One every day. Vacation or staycation? Vacation. I'm an introvert. Okay. Make plans or wing it? Make plans always. Oh. Mm. Okay. So if you go to Disney World, you plan in the whole day? I am the concierge. Oh. I, I will administratively execute everything oh, that okay. needs to happen. Okay. And the whole thing can be paid for before we leave. Period. Yeah. Oh, period. Period, <laughs> Pooh. <laughs> Enjoy right now or prepare for what's next. Enjoy right now. Yeah, well, the same way. Those are yeah. some good, decisive yeah. answers. Yeah, you didn't even really have to think about it. Mm -mm. Well, first answer is the right answer. That's true. <laughs> uh, how was your Father's Day? Father's Day was dope. Um, I love being a dad. I really do. And at the age and stage that my boys are now, it's a, uh, it's a privilege to be able to um, escort them through manhood. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, in, I'm enjoying being a daddy. Yeah. Did you yeah. ever, like, I know some women, like, we dream of being moms, like, our whole life, or we don't. Like, mm -hmm. was that always something you wanted, and did you want to father boys, or did you? Yeah, so um, I always dreamed of being married. Okay. I wanted to be married since I was eight years old. Aww, so between my common. between my parents, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, who, who have a beautiful marriage, very, very communicative. My dad was a hopeless romantic, like, mm -hmm. He had, a, he had a rose garden in the front yard, and he wow. clipped the roses, dethorned them, and put them on the dashboard of mom's car with a little note. <laughs> My mother never backed her car out of the driveway a day in her life. <clears throat> Rivers. <clears throat> and... <laughs> So, so I saw all of this growing yeah. up, and at eight years old, eight between years. My parents and the Huxtables, mm. okay. um, I was like, I can't wait to be married. So I've always wanted to be married. Kids are just... A consequence of my love for my I was wife. Say, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Oh wow. no, the way you talk about your wife, I think I'm in love with her. Too. <laughs> <laughs> like he is so sweet all the time yeah. to Juliet. I'm like sprung on her. I can tell. I love yeah, that. very much so. Yeah, That's it's very beautiful. authentic. Yeah. Well, speaking of your wife, when it came to motherhood, how did you? 
what ways did you find like to best support her, especially through, through like pregnancy and those early days of, you know, birth and all of the things? And yeah. how did she, if at all, communicate that she needed support and help? Or were you already like proactive, did you feel like? I'm, I'm, I'm very proactive when it just comes to my wife's needs. Um, I am, I anticipate needs uh, so much so embarrassingly um, with our first child because um, Julia has been pregnant f five times, but uh, we lost three. Okay. So um, when Nathan was born, embarrassingly, I actually gave my wife postpartum depression because I was taking the baby like, no, you sleep through the night. I got the baby oh. and da 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 And she needed her baby. Oh, <laughs> right? You know what I, I mean? I did not. And I, and yeah. I was... My, and it, she was so sweet, and it was our first kid, so you're yeah. always hyper vigilant with your first. Yeah. Um, by the time the second one comes, it's like, you ain't gonna die. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, that yeah. second one. Yeah. The truth. Pictures fall off 50%, mm -hmm. everything. You like. <laughs> no diaper bag, you just, yeah, yeah, yeah. just like, throw it in your right. purse, yeah. Yeah. everything's <laughs> fine. Um, but with the first, uh, my mother had to call me and be like, will you please give it? And she holds Julie your baby. And her baby. <laughs> wow. She was like, "You are giving her depression." I was oh. like, "I'm so sorry." Okay. So, I had to learn, you know, the rhythm in each stage of where she needed to lead and then where I needed to support. What do you think you needed during those days? I think we often talk about like what moms need during yeah. that time, um, but. No one really asks about the dad. Like, they'll talk about what the dad's not doing or what he should be doing. Like, yeah. what would you say to a mom, whether it's their first or third child, like, what do you, what support do you wish you had? What do you wish you were able to do? Yeah, I think, um, I can't speak for all men, but I know for myself, that first child um, changes you. Your, your, your brain kind of switches and you're like, I need to support in a different way. I'm not just thinking about my wife anymore. I'm thinking about my wife and my child. And so I had a lot of fears that were not articulated at first. I felt them, but I didn't have words for them. But I, I have therapists and I always process. So I was able to be able to unpack that, find the language for it, and then bring it home to my wife and say, here's what I'm feeling right now. Mm -hmm. You know, having this baby terrifies me. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't know how I'm going to support this whole thing. I don't know. Right. I'm already thinking about college. You yeah. know, yeah. I'm not, I was not in the moment of yeah. like, let's just take one day at a time. I'm yeah. like, how are we going to pay for this kid? Yeah. And college is expensive. Yeah. And maybe they just be an athlete and get out of my pocket. <laughs> like, you know, I was projecting mm -hmm. a lot. So again, for me, if I if it doesn't come up and out through words, it will come up and out through actions. Yeah, it comes so, out somehow. Yeah, yeah, so I'm big on getting my feelings into words because then I can have context to what they are and then navigate them better. I think that's a really good tip because I've had a lot of moms come to me and they'll ask me like, "What was your experience with you know your spouse?" Because sometimes they don't know how to communicate and articulate, and yeah. it seems like they don't care or they don't understand. And I had to tell them, I don't think that it's that they don't understand or that they don't care. I right. think they're just processing so much internally. Oh, for sure. And they don't know how to say, I'm scared. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it's so good to hear that from a, a male perspective, though, because a lot of women truly don't get it. And then yeah. they feel like... Now we're arguing about something that's not really an argument. Right. You know what that's I mean? That's not even the issue. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a lot of the times I say. <laughs> and then we also, and that's due to postpartum, not even depression, just postpartum. Like, we tend to push you guys away, too, because we want things our way, like the diapers this way or, you know, you got to birth them, like way. everything. So yeah. then we can accidentally, like, just push you guys away from bonding yeah. in that way, too. Yeah. The, the one, one of the things... Um, that motherhood does to the dad is, um, I'm speaking for myself again. <laughs> I watched my child who I love. Steal your wife. <laughs> take my wife. Ooh. When he was on them breasts, <laughs> I was pissed. Yeah. Now you're so I'm like, I need share. those back for him. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And, and you in the bed with her more than I am yeah. right now. You okay. cuddled up, you know what I mean? I'm losing yeah. spooning time, I'm yeah. losing cuddle time, I'm yeah. losing all the time. Man, that's good. And I have to, I had to actually grieve mm. 
the loss of my wife in that way mm-hmm. for a season. I was going to get her back. But for a season, I, I had to grieve and mourn the loss of that or else I was really going to set up some resentment right. yeah. and be like, oh, you putting him in front of me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when that's not the case. And we're not even thinking in that no, way we're because not. we're no. so in a... In a fall. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, your bodies are going through changes. Yeah. Like, How do you, like, and then we're like, you even want to be around yeah. us? Like, oh, yeah, like, we don't even yeah. think oh, that. Yeah. that Cal, <laughs> listen. Yeah. Listen. <laughs> my, my, listen, what my kids did to my wife's body, I wanted her more. So yeah. I was not running away from her. I was yeah. running to her. I'm like, can you sleep? Over there. Yeah. <laughs> just take a nap yeah. for an hour, bro, and just give me my wife for yeah. a minute. Yeah. So, it was, it's, um, it's an adjustment. And my, my reminder, my encouragement to fathers would be, this is just a season. My encouragement to mothers would be, this is just a season. It can be a taxing season, especially when you start having kids back to back. But it's only a season. And when that season shifts, you can get back into a rhythm and prioritize the relationship. But that's what I was gonna ask. Is it just a season? Like, does your marriage ever go back to what it was pre-kids? Like, you've been through several different phases now of Mm -mm. being a father. So it's like, how has that affected your marriage through different stages of your children's lives? So prioritization is very, very key. So my my earliest memories of of realizing that my parents loved each other way more than they loved us Mm -hmm. is when I turned 13, my parents handed us a $20 bill and said, uh, we bought you all some frozen dinners. This is enough money for pizza. They left on Friday and came back on Sunday Mm -hmm. and didn't tell us where they were going. Now this is back in the days of landlines. So they handed us a 20 on Friday and said, uh, don't let that phone ring three times without you answering it. Mm -hmm. We bet not hear no other people in this house. We're leaving for the weekend. And we were like, where are you going? Don't worry about where we're going. (laughs) <laughs> Don't call us, we'll call yeah. you, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, we couldn't even call you. Right, yeah. We found out years later they were going to the embassy suites down the street. <laughs> Staycation. But they, but they were literally yeah. prioritizing yeah. their marriage. Yeah. And they were not going to allow kids yeah. to become the excuse yeah. of why they don't date. And why they don't still don't have time together and why don't they don't romance romance each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I learned from a very early age, looking at my own parents, that, oh yeah, y'all joke is y'all gonna be all right. Right. Uh, bring the mother-in-law over here, get the sister-in-law. Yeah. I have no shame in having somebody oh. come yeah. babysit these kids because I wanna go out with my wife. Yeah. 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 And I was gonna say that I I was gonna ask practically, because I know we also have like so many moms who have younger children that follow us and watch this, mm-hmm. they're gonna ask immediately like, well, what is the solution for when my kids are younger? And I know it's like, okay, have somebody come mm-hmm. over, but is there any other, especially for like our single parents, you know, yeah. is there something else that they could do to just try to, maybe it's somebody that they're seriously dating or, you know, whatever the case may be, yeah. that it's not maybe leaving for a weekend, but for sure. are there practical things maybe throughout the week that you guys do? Oh, absolutely. So when the kids were, really, really young, we used all of their bedtime. Now, it made, it made us had very short nights, right? Yeah. We only sleep in four or five hours anyway. Yeah. Well, if that's the case, when you put these kids down, we're going to watch a show. Yep. We're going to have a conversation. Okay. We're going to order some takeout. Ain't nobody cooking. And we just going to look at each other and talk and woo-woo yeah. until we either fall asleep. If we get sex, great. Right. If we don't get it, we just going yeah. right. spoon tonight. Yeah. And then... So I'm gonna have to get up at this baby in the morning yeah. at two or three o'clock in the morning, feed, put him back to sleep. But we're but the intentionality is key. Whether you get away or you just steal away four or five hours, get the time in. Yeah. Because again, it's only seasonal and you'll be able to make those adjustments as the kids continue to grow. And that's why kids' bedtimes are important. Yes. Oh, they are. They're very important. Absolutely One thing I don't correct. play about is a bedtime. bedtime. Yeah, it's, it's eight o'clock. And then yes. when we want to spend time together, it's like seven. Yeah, yeah, for sure. 6.37. That's when my life starts. But I'm not tired. I don't care. I don't care. You can talk to Jesus, you can talk to yourself, but you're not going to talk to us. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And don't come out the room. No. Unless you have to pee. Yeah. Yeah. No, we got a gate. We got a lighted clock. You do have that gate. Yeah, we got a gate. You're not coming out of here. Yeah. I love it. I just, I'm like, after three months, my kids don't get in my bed, nothing like that. They have their own room. Like, I don't play with any of that. And I think even outside of marriage, just so... I can have my time. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's very, very important yeah. not to lose yourself. Now, you're a pretty busy uh, man. 
<laughs> Psych. Uh, <laughs> I'm really not. <laughs> but how would you, what would you say to a father who is trying to really balance, like, being active, mm -hmm. but also trying to be a provider mm -hmm. and trying to make sure that he's taking care of home yeah. um, without feeling overwhelmed? Because I think, you know, males, they have a one-track mind a mm -hmm. little bit. And sometimes it's hard to say, oh, wait, I need to stop and, you know, actually pay attention to my child. Yeah. Like, what does that look like for you? Yeah, so I do have a one-track mind. <laughs> I think the advice I would give uh, a man wired like me is, uh, you have to know the length of these tracks. So if I, I have a one-track mind when it comes to work, mm -hmm. how long is the length of this track mm -hmm. as it relates to work? Is it two yeah. miles? Is it seven miles? Is it 20 miles? When does it end? Mm -hmm. The only time a track, a one-track mind, gets into uh, a problematic situation is when there is no ending. So I need to know when this train stops so I can get off it and get on the next train. Right. And sometimes those stops okay. happen and I got to get off right here, get on this train and then get back on the other train. Mm -hmm. So um, I've never been in a rhythm where, except when I was depressed, that uh, my kids thought my daddy's not around or he's, he's here, but he's not here. Mm -hmm. He won't put down his phone. He doesn't look me in the eye. Mm -hmm. I have intentional time. I've always had intentional mm -hmm. time with my boys. Fridays is boy day. Mm -hmm. We have devotion every night before they go to bed um, uh, as a family. And so there's time for everything yeah. as long as you schedule it. You make time for what you care about. You period. make time for what you care Always. about. And if you care about it, it's going on the calendar. Yeah. If yeah. you don't care about it, then it's like if I get around to it. Yeah. And I'm never going to get around to my wife and I'm never going to get around to my kids. Mm -hmm. You have bandwidth for everything as long as you schedule it. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> man, okay. How has um, fatherhood, like, evolved you as a man? Like, who you were, you know, 10, 11 years ago? Your oldest is? Yeah, my oldest is 14. 14. Yeah, he'll be 15. I, I have a 15-year-old and a 13-year-old okay. this year. How mm -hmm. old you were, like, who you were 15 years ago versus uh -huh. now? Like yeah, you. I'm I'm so much more, I'm, I'm way more settled. So Juliet and I had our kids in our 30s, okay. not in our 20s. Have your kids. I, I tell my unsolicited advice is don't have kids till you're 30 plus. <laughs> Live your life. Live your life. Your brain is, your brain is much more settled, mm -hmm. right? Because psychology says your brain isn't fully developed until you're about 25. Mm -hmm. so, so I had my first one at 33, my second one at 35. And I was just a different person yeah. by that time. And when the boys came out, I'm like, yeah, these these are these are little humans. Mm -hmm. They're trying, and, and because I had done so much therapy for my trauma, yeah. Yeah. Um, I was just able to see my little boys for who they are. They're little human beings trying mm -hmm. to figure it out. They're sitcoms older than them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why do I expect them to be mature in this situation? Yeah. Why do I expect them to know what I know? Yep. They're nine, right? Mm -hmm. Even yep. now, at, at going to be fifteen mm -hmm. and going to be thirteen, I look at them and I'm like, y'all are dumb. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all are really dumb. Like, you know, most parents want to be like, they you look are really dumb. I got that. My, I, I give you that. You know what I, mean? understand. My, I understand. The bumper sticker. Yep. My kid's an honor roll student. Like, your, nah. your kid's dumb. <laughs> yeah. Just because they can learn You're, some, yeah. some school stuff. Yeah. yeah. Just because they know how to rote yeah. math and, and division and, and, and write an essay yeah. doesn't mean they know how to clean their room I, yeah. after the 19th time that you told them. I yeah. would say the most important thing to me is my children know how to think. Like, it, the other stuff is bonus, but I need them to know they how to They just know how to think. And, and, and they don't know yet. We homeschool yeah. our kids. We do. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I'm yes. like, I don't trust... Because we're disciple makers, like mm -hmm. by default, right? Mm -hmm. So I do not trust that they were going to have our values after five years. Now, I know everybody's yeah. not in that situation to be able to do that. Okay. I'm a product of the public school system. Mm -hmm. yeah. But what I tell people is that I was private, I was publicly homeschooled, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, I went to school, then my mom, Came when we come home in the evening, my mom was like, now let me tell you what it really is. What it really is. That's like, you know what I mean? Because they, yeah. yeah. they didn't even teach you this, right? Yes. So for my boys, um, they're being exposed to their world. Mm -hmm. Right, we have conversations with them every night, and they're talking about, you know, young Vaughn, King Vaughn, and NLE Chopper, and mm -hmm. you know, Triple X Extension. Yeah. And I'm That's like, you do that? you know, like two thirds of y'all? Yeah. I'm like, two thirds of y'all's rappers got murdered. 
Yeah. yeah. It was just Pac and Biggie for us. Everybody else survived. Yeah. Just Everybody did. Getting slaughtered by the time they're 22. Yeah. Young Dolph dead. Everybody did, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so, but, but we make intentional time to be in their world. Yeah. Yeah. And we're learning if we just shut up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If we stop talking, they'll tell us everything. That's true. Mm-hmm. They just need to know if we're listening. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so we're like, go on. And then what? And they're like, yeah, then this daddy and then that daddy. I'm like, I'm just getting into it. I used to tell yeah. on myself all the time as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's something about raising boys, too, because there's already such a, um expectation. Just like it's an expectation for women and mothers, yeah. there's an expectation for males. And you have two boys, yeah. and we're in a different generation and what they're exposed to and all yeah. of the things. And I think it's even like we're, we are very, um, it's easy to try and project. Yeah. And so I even, I heard you say like your trauma, you were already healed yeah. from, you know, a c- certain things. But what if you weren't? Do you feel like, like there are plenty of fathers out there that like aren't healed because they oh, didn't sure. have yeah. the therapy. I'm going to say 90%. Yeah, like yeah. it's way more, <laughs> oh, way more. Um, yeah. out there that don't have your story, but right. you were there. Like what, what advice would you give to that part of yourself? Because there are a lot of men, I think, out there who need to hear that part yeah. and still have to parent through. Yeah, for like, sure. What does that look like? Yeah, I, I, I encourage all men to like get to the epicenter of your wound. Right. Don't just address the symptom. Go to the root. Right. If you if you have a code and I hand you Kleenex, I'm not helping you. I'm giving you something for your symptom. I'm not helping you end the source, which is the virus. I remember um, being uh, so my kids are upper middle class. They bougie. Okay. (laughs) I'm from from the hood. I'm from Inglewood. Okay. Okay. My kids are not. Mm-hmm. They don't know what a hood looks like. I was They've say, heard can about they it. even visit? Yeah, they've heard about it in songs. <laughs> right. Right. But I have taken them to the hood just okay. to okay. let them know this what do y'all like. want to be. Did you disappear or you just. No, like, no. I, <laughs> like go around the corner, like y'all by yourself. Go. Well, I asked them, Get I out. Said, I asked them, I said, um, would you feel comfortable if I let y'all out and, and walked a couple of blocks? They said, no, daddy. <laughs> Please don't. I, I said, okay. But we okay. were in Turks and Caicos. It's how bougie we are. Uh, said my parents never, right? Mm-hmm. Like, we were right. in Turks and Caicos. Right. Right? That, that has never happened. Right. We went to Disney for a day. Mm-hmm. And we drove home, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. So we're in Turks and Caicos for like a month, right? Oh, and bad and we're, right. we're in a house. <laughs> Goodness. We have a chef and a butler. Uh, okay. okay. And we're, 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 right. we're sitting at a table. And there's three generations sitting at the table. Wow. My mother-in-law, me and my wife, my wife and I, and my two boys. Two of these three generations have never been here before. This last generation, this is their normal. Uh And what I had to do in that moment, I literally had the thought, Tim, do not mess this up for your sons. By opening your mouth and saying, you know we didn't have this growing up. Uh, You need to appreciate this. Yes. Because we didn't ever have nothing like this. Your grandparents ain't never had nothing. Yeah. Don't project what you didn't have or the Ooh. lack of what you didn't have to mess up what is their normal. Oh. Yeah. Your ancestors paid for them to be mm-hmm. at this table. Right. My parents paid for them to be mm-hmm. at this table. Yeah. I worked hard for them to be at this table. Now I'm going to guilt them right. yeah. at this table. Mm-hmm. So if I don't do my own work, I'm not even aware enough to catch myself. Mm-hmm. And so my encouragement to fathers is do the work. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can, you can pass off a bunch of anger and resentment to your kids thinking that you're toughening them up. Oh, yeah. gosh. Especially boys. Yeah, 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 yeah. especially boys. Right. And really, you're just putting them in line for your therapist. Right. <laughs> right. So I want them to go to therapy for different stuff. I don't want them to go for this, yeah. you know. Yeah. I would say all our kids are going to end up in therapy because it's healthy, first of they all. They need to be right. in therapy. But there's, yeah. all, there's always going to be something. Th- mm-hmm. It is. Gonna, I'm going to miss yeah. something. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. I want to be aware things. of as much as I can. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. No, that's really good. Yeah. So what do you say to fathers? Because, you know, there's always a thing where, like, when the kids are young, a lot of fathers are like, okay, the mom got that. I'm a, When they get to the fun age, that's mm. where I'm going to yeah. like show up and like now be the, like, be the active. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when they can play basketball, like what is being an active father? Um, an active father is an action father. 
right? Like what we know about God is that he loved the world so much he gave. Mm -hmm. He didn't say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's true. He gave something. It was mm -hmm. an action behind it. And so I'll never forget both of my kids. I used to talk to them through the womb. And I'll never forget, I was over the doctor's shoulder when both my babies came out yeah. of my wife's womb, right? I cut the umbilical cord. And then I said, Nathan. And then I, he went to looking for me. Mm -hmm. Noah. Oh my God, them eyes went to looking for me. They've heard my voice since before they came out their mother's womb. And my voice has been constant. They get words of affirmation from me every single night. If I'm away, FaceTime is happening. They know they're gonna hear from their father. So the intentionality of ensuring that um, my love is actionable, mm -hmm. right? It's not just in, in word, it has to be in deed. Mm -hmm. My daddy was there. Mm -hmm. My daddy shows up. Mm -hmm. My daddy cancels stuff mm -hmm. to be here. Right. You know what I mean? That is like an important thing. Yeah. That's really good. What does it look like in marriage? Like, so you have the kids, you have your marriage, you're prioritizing it, all the things, right? Mm -hmm. But it's also not always amazing. Mm -hmm. Like you, oh, there are times where, you know, mm -hmm. the busyness of life or just the ebbs and flows of things. And I know as women, we go through our own challenges and journeys and it's not always lining up with our spouse like yeah. what does that look like and how do you support if anything yeah. or come to a middle ground because sometimes it could almost feel like a business partnership oh, um it's for a can <laughs> if you one. don't you know like what how especially when you actually work together oh for yeah. sure <laughs> yeah for sure. <laughs> I mean, it happens regardless, but once you... Yeah. So, yeah, we, we Juliet and I are in that situation now with our LLC. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we do business together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so um, we have to have lines of demarcation mm -hmm. of when it's business and when it's not. Mm -hmm. Like, I will cut it off in a minute. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like, she's ready to talk business and it's like, oh, no, that stopped at six. Mm -hmm. It's 730. Yeah. Right. That has to wait till tomorrow. Yeah. Oh my goodness, baby. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for reminding me because my wife is half Jamaican. So that mm -hmm. Jamaican side has 13 jobs. <laughs> yep. Yes. Okay. By yes. herself, she yeah. got yep. 13 before mm -hmm. we even get to our business together. Right. So um, um, I'm very intentional about, we have a cutoff yeah. for this. And we're not talking about business no more. When you talk about those times where it's like, you know what, we're just not connecting. I get curious about that. Right? Like, I want to know where is our disconnect? What are you feeling right now? Because um, communication um, can mitigate frustration. If I have context, I'm good. Yeah. If I don't have context, I'm not good. The B clause of Proverbs 4 7 is literally like my life mantra, right? Mm -hmm. Wisdom is a principal thing, therefore get wisdom with all that get and get an understanding. So I live by this. A mantra that context is king. I want to be a homicide detective. Oh. We, I, I'm used to figuring out the motive behind the murder. Oh, okay. That's okay. what I'm trained to do. Okay. Okay. So whenever there's a disconnect, I just want to know what caused this? Yeah. Where did we get off? Mm -hmm. And uh, once we get that into words and I have context, I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. Then we can float around this now. Yeah. I'm not pissed with you. Right. Yeah. Think, walking around like, oh, so you ain't going to talk? I ain't going to talk. Yeah. <laughs> right? Because... Yeah. There's a little bit of a petty Eddie in the inside of me. And petty I gotta, Eddie. I got to, you know, he needs to be <laughs> yeah. slayed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, but I can do that with curiosity. Yeah. yeah. Because you cannot be offended and curious at the same time. Yeah. yeah. That's a good point. So stay curious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stay curious. On them days where you, it just seems off, you off with your spouse, you off with yourself, yeah. mm -hmm. you off with the kids. I mean, you go from two to three, three to four, however many kids you have, um, there's, you're, you're increasing the problem the probability yeah. and possibility that someone's going to wake up on the wrong side of the bed. Yeah. That's not an issue. Yeah. Let's just get context to what happened today. Mm -hmm. so we what we feeling today. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Are, are we hypoglycemic? <laughs> you know what I mean? Did you only get three three hours of sleep? Right. You know, did, 
Did, did I say something yesterday and you yeah. went to bed on it and woke up yeah. and brooded on it all night and got up like... I was ready to go. Yeah, you, re you know what I mean? I'm ready to clap back. And it's like, good morning. She was thinking about that all night. Get out of the shower like, let's yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. Let's so, go. <laughs> so getting context will help kind of mitigate that. Yeah. Doesn't mean awesome. the frustration the frustration disappears, but at least you're not like, I don't know, I don't know where this is coming from. Mm -hmm. So I always check in with Juliet. Yeah. I always check in. Where are you right now? How am I doing as a husband? I hate asking that question. Cause I'm cause I'm open because I'm inviting an answer that mm -hmm. I might not want. Yeah. But I check in, I'd be like, Oof. am I doing okay? Yeah. And if I am, I'm like, Whoosh. and, and she'd be like, I'm so glad you mentioned that. Yeah. <laughs> so just be curious. Yeah, we would um sometimes say we probably should have got more consistent with it, but how can I love you better? Like at the mm, end of the day, yes, because good. then it comes in a safe space yeah, instead absolutely. of like in the moment. Yeah, you're being invited into yep. it as opposed to the person going like, "Man, I got to tell you about yourself because you don't see yourself." Exactly, yeah. and, and especially if like the rest of the day went well, it's like, okay, I can't bring this up and start an argument, but then it go and come into the next one. That's exactly right. That's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. 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 I have a question. Kind of brings us back a little bit, but you mentioned your. Um, well, I'll say both of you lost three babies. Mm -hmm. um, how do you support your wife through that? Because I feel like a lot of the times, like men, because they're so practical, they can move on yep. while we still have the hormones in us, first of For all, sure. and then have had the experience. So, yeah. so how did you guys get through that? Well, that first one was devastating because um, I, I, I had baby fever. Like I wanted a baby. She was not ready. And um, so I'm like, can we get a dog? And she's like, fool. You travel so much. I'm gonna take care of this dog. Yeah, so right. we ain't even getting a dog. I'm yep. like, okay. I just wanted a little Paris Hilton dog. Oh, <laughs> some hyperallergenic. She's yeah. like, no, fool. You ain't getting it because <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna be taking care of this dog while yep. you're on the road, right? So then she just came off birth control mm -hmm. and surprised me. Like she just got pregnant and yeah. didn't tell me she was already going to the doctor. And so she, we were already past the third trimester, and it was like, oh, like. And then she told me after three months. like Now, her body was already like wow. changing, yeah. but I just thought, ooh, you getting thick and all the right, like, that booty <laughs> is just so juicy. Unaware. <laughs> We're very aware. <laughs> it's we like, aware. aware. You <laughs> ain't out of it, you don't know what you, right. Right. Like, ooh, you're like, ooh, thick. look at the booty. Ooh, that booty, ooh, and them breasts. Yeah. Hey, this is beautiful, <laughs> girl. And then she just came home one day. When I came home one day, she was just like, I'm pregnant and I started and she was like, I'm already three months, da, 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 we good. And I'm balling. We went to, uh, we rented this, uh, the governor's suite. I'll never forget it at the Omni Mandalay. And we had our closest friends there and we shared it with them and it was all good. And then um, we went to the next checkup and there was no heartbeat. Oh. And it was like, no, there's got to be a mistake, right? So we start believing God and slinging oil and doing all the things, mm -hmm. right, that we know to do, that we learn to do, that mm -hmm. we were taught to do, and um, went back again, no heartbeat. And um, because of where the progression was, the baby didn't come out on its own, yep. and so they had to do a DNC, yep. and then my wife thought she was getting an abortion in her mind, and like, I'm giving up faith if I let you go in here and take this baby out. And it was bad. Like when I tell you devastating, and we went straight to the therapist and cried it out and yelled it out and um, processed it out and released balloons and mm -hmm. did all the stuff. But it was, it was, that was a, that was devastating. Mm -hmm. Like that was, the first one was, Devastating, and um, like my my ther my EMDR therapist is always telling me to pay attention to my body. So even doing that just yeah. lets me know that that thing, Still. that thing, that yeah. thing hurt. And um, I did stand up comedy for two years. So um, I had because of the trauma I endured as a child, I actually had comedy before I had Jesus. I had comedy before I had porn. I had comedy before I had anything. Yeah. Right. So. Um, one day now, this is my trigger alert. This ain't okay. everybody's experience, right? Mm -hmm. So some things can trigger other people. Other mm -hmm. people can handle it. I'm just telling you what happened in our marriage and how we moved on, okay? Mm -hmm. So um, 
One day we were in the house and I'm like, I'm glad we lost that baby. <laughs> and Juliet was like, what? <laughs> and I said, I'm glad we lost that baby. I said, that baby only had one job. Stay alive. If that joker couldn't do that, imagine what we would have <laughs> gave birth to. That would have been the lazy, Jesus. lost baby in the whole world. Oh and my that God. that girl burst out laughing. Now, I know, trigger alert. I know I this ain't everybody thing. You. Somebody probably crying right now. I'm just telling you what happened. In the, I said, that was going to be the laziest baby that, that, that we ever gave birth to. I said, that joker needed to just go on to heaven. I thought you were going to get some deep answer. I always say my first miscarriage, like that baby uh, did its job and helped our marriage. And what? like that it served its purpose. <laughs> oh my God. Job. I this literally is the can't easiest, breathe. This is the easiest your <laughs> life is going to be. And you couldn't even stay in the womb? <laughs> get out of here. Is and she? get out, they did. And so <laughs> we just said, okay. <laughs> And get out, they did. So we left. Sir, I'm sweating. And that was part of our healing. <laughs> yeah. And we moved on. Let me tell you what happened. Mm -hmm. We had Nathan. Yeah. Phew. Then we got pregnant again yeah. with the third one. Man. Another lazy baby. Another lazy baby. And you know what Juliet Jesus. came out? Juliet came out and said, another lazy one. <laughs> and this is the way that we processed right. it. it was wow. Everybody processes differently. <laughs> Right? Some people have to... I got to marry the right one for you. Yeah. yeah. Listen. <laughs> I, told another, I told another couple this, and she said, I would have divorced you on the spot. <laughs> I said, I understand. I get it. You know yeah. yeah. But for us, like, that's, yeah. the, that's the way we needed to process. Yeah. yeah. Like, for us, <laughs> it made sense. Like, that <laughs> first one was devastating. And we, we did name the first one. We named the first one uh, Ferez. Okay. Ferez means breaker. We felt mm. like... That was the one that broke through and made Nathan possible. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think about that too. I'm like, without that miscarriage, I wouldn't have yeah. Noble. And yeah. I can't imagine yeah. not having Noble. And, and when, you, when, when God gives you your babies, he gives you amnesia. Mm -hmm. It's not that you don't experience that loss anymore, or you, yeah. you, but you don't feel it because the joy of that one that made it. And so, um, yeah, that was our process. What did your faith look like during that process? Because... Before you got to the yeah, before you got to the joke. Uh huh. I was I was um. I was really like discouraged. Mm -hmm. I wasn't mad at God. You know, some people are like, yeah. I was just really discouraged. I was like, did I do something? Mm -hmm. And then and then um, all my trauma started flaring up. Always mm -hmm. because of all of my promiscuity in the past oh. and it's because of my uh, it's because of my like porn addiction that I had and it's because stuff. of the like I started like I was in a really all the stuff dark Jesus place. already died on the yeah, cross yeah, yeah. yeah. And then it was all on me yeah yeah I was punishing myself because it's yeah. control yeah yeah it's control. if we did it we can fix it yeah yeah exactly and it's like you know what and then you talk to other people that have gone through the same thing and then you mm -hmm. talk to I can't tell you how many couples we've talked to it's like it was almost like we talked to more couples that lost children yeah. Even stillborns. Like yeah. we 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 have a dear friend mm -hmm. nine months yeah. had to push that baby out. Right? It's so ridiculously that's common. It is. But nobody is. talks about it. That's nobody talks asking, about it, and process? that's what makes it seem rare. Yes. Yeah. That's what makes every couple thinks I'm the only one that's yeah. ever been through this. Because mm -hmm. no too many people edit their testimonies. Mm -hmm. And it, the the <laughs> editing yeah. of the, the editing of testimonies doesn't give people a full picture mm -hmm. of how God navigates you through life. Yep. He never said it was going to be yeah. dandelions yep. and roses and, you know what I mean, yep. skipping through a, a field of lilies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He just said he'd be with you mm -hmm. yeah. through it all, yeah. no matter what you went through, right? Right, good, bad, or indifferent. So um, we learned a lot mm -hmm. about what other people were going through. And we, we, we have friends that can't conceive. Yeah. yeah. Have believed God 17, 18, 19 years during their 50s. Yeah. And their tubes yeah. won't yeah. allow for, and not all they, have, they ever prayed for was a child. Yeah. yeah. So when you think about moms actually, <laughs> yeah. you got moms who have actually given birth, moms who have actually 
lost children and moms who have that spirit but haven't actually been able to hold that child. And we have to embrace all, the, the whole spectrum yep. of mothers yeah. mm -hmm. going Man. through all of those things. That's so good. Yeah, I started talking about my miscarriage a lot because I was just like, once I realized every time I talked about it, someone was like, oh, me too. Like, yeah. I was like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. I never wanted anybody to feel like how I initially felt. So I was yeah. like, I, you know, it gets weird because people are like, oh my God, I'm, so, I'm like, I'm fine. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. I really am fine. Yeah. But it's like, I just talk about it because other people aren't fine, but they've never been able to talk about it because they don't want to make it awkward for other people. That's right. Yeah. And it's not. It's not. It you know? doesn't have to be. I have one last question. Okay. What is the thing that you want your boys to model after you the most? My love for God. If, well, I'm going to say two things. My love for God and my love for their mother. Um, that's what I saw from my dad. Um, they'll be married 49 years this year. It'll be 24 for Juliet and I. And if God keeps us all healthy and alive, next year is their 50th. Our 25th, we're renewing our vows. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. yeah. And people gonna... be hating on your marriage. I saw one post. And yeah. They're like, we staying together. I don't know what, why y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's some people that, wow. when you, when you mm -hmm. talk about a successful marriage mm -hmm. in a culture where over 50% ends That's in divorce, true. they're like, you're, you're next. Mm. Like, you ain't going to stay married. People Ooh. projecting. Yeah, yeah. Your wife it wants to leave real, you. All, it ain't, it yeah. ain't real. It's all that kind of stuff. And oh, you say that now, yeah. but mm -hmm. you about to get your heart broken. Yeah. And somebody about to get cheated on. Yeah. And y'all going to wind up in a divorce. Uh, I'm, I'm going to just hold this clip for when your divorce takes place. And I'm like. You say that? Oh, for sure. Wow. Oh, their comment sections are reckless. <laughs> See, I don't read the comments even on other people's stuff. Yeah. It's just. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't, I don't read uh, yeah. comments uh, because. And I don't read comments, and some of that stuff just gets to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when it gets to you, you're just like, oh, people are so sad. Yeah. It's like mean tweets. That's how I feel about bad people comments. People hurt people. Yeah, yeah. they do. Mm -hmm. They do. Mm -hmm. And so they haven't seen, uh, everybody hasn't had the picture that we've had. Yeah. And so they can't even conceive it. Yeah. yeah. You know, and that's, that's a, it's a really bad, bad way to live. Yeah. Yeah, so. Wow. Yeah. Is there anything... You would like to say to men, to fathers, anything you want to leave them with, anything they should take away from you being here? Um, I heard a sociologist say a couple of weeks ago that um, a father's role in the child's life is so important. When you have a mother and a father, that child's success rate is like 66% higher than those that are raised with single moms. If there is a, a break in that relationship, if the child is with the father, they have the same identical success rate with a single father that they have with a mother and a father. Oh, you about to get some wow. single mamas. <laughs> wow. A little tight. Wow. I can't speak for the deadbeat dad. Yeah. What I am encouraging fathers to understand is that their voice is incredibly important. I was born in Englewood, California. I was labeled at risk by the time I was in sixth grade. My older brother founded a gang in LA. Oh, wow. And by all statistical measures, I was supposed to be next. I was more afraid of my daddy's belt than I was the dudes on the block. And I am the man that I am today is because I had a present father in my life. So my encouragement to fathers is be present because you could be saving your child's life. Literally saving his or her life. I know we're supposed to leave it there, but <gasps> you're, 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 you're father. So your brother had the same father. Yes, no, no, his father died, his oh. father was killed. So my older, I, I am the firstborn of my father, the second of my mother. Okay. My older brother's 10 years older than me. Okay, I was gotcha. gonna ask how, you know, yeah. that me, okay. Yeah. That's good um, to know. I gotta give you one more stat though. Oh, this I'll one take it. is juicy, oh. okay? So um, a, a girl mm -hmm. uh, who is raised with a father 
and that relationship is good, mm -hmm. physiologically um, develops slower than a girl that does not have a father. Oh, sense wow. She does not blossom. That makes sense. Quote, unquote. Because she already has a man. Oh. And so her body doesn't have yeah. to develop because she's like, <laughs> I don't need... I'm thinking about I, myself. I'm like, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm I don't need myself. I was flat as a board for like, the longest time. So I got... I, I, I co-signed uh, that. That's hilarious. <laughs> they, they, they don't have that 13-year-old... You know what I mean? Yeah. Looking like she 21. Your body isn't reacting to yeah, the body. Because the body is not the body's not saying I need the attention of a man because I want to be yeah. loved by a man. And so a, a daughter that has a present father physiologically develops later than a w young woman that doesn't. I just think it's a cool stat for dudes. Daddies are important. For everybody. Wow. Yeah, yeah. 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 Daddies are important. Wow. wow. I think it's wild that like Men know that. I think not that, but men know that they're important. Fathers know that they're important, but then sometimes they re-traumatize their kids through their trauma. Like that's correct. They want sons, and then they don't show up for their yeah, sons. Absolutely correct. You know, correct. they want children, but then they don't show up. Yeah. And because of their trauma or what have you, and then they re-traumatize. I and that's the importance of therapy. Yeah, it and is. Community yeah. and everything. Yeah. Because you can't break generational. Like we're giving it to our kids. That's otherwise, correct. it's just yeah. The most extravagant gift that I've that I currently give to my sons is um, a healed heart. Yeah. Like I'm not fathering them from pain. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not projecting yeah. what happened in my life onto them. Yeah. They get to grow and make their mistakes and all that kind of stuff. And then when they mess up, I'm quick to put them back in line. So it's, it's incumbent upon men to do their work yeah. so that they can be good for themselves yeah. Good for their wives and good for their children. That's good. That's really to good. Be. Wow. Well, thank you so much. Yes. Honor you know, to be you here. are the first male to, to ever, ever be on Mom's Action. Yeah, to ever. And I, I literally screamed when you agreed to be. She did. I've her. never heard her be audible in that way. <laughs> she thought it was somebody else because I don't do I stuff like, like that. Did you just scream? You were like, I don't, you were like Lauren, was that you? <laughs> That is hilarious. <laughs> I was, but we are grateful yes. for I'm so you. I'm to be here. Yes. We are Thank grateful you so for your wisdom, Thank you. your words. And I'm sure there are many dads who will be um, grateful that you came and just joined us today. And really wives. I was going to say mothers, wives, moms, Yeah, women. all the things. They're going to be grateful for your words. They're going to be sending it to their spouse yes. and say, look, you need to watch this. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. Yes. I hope you guys uh, share this yes, with someone. Please. please make sure you subscribe. Follow Upset the Gram. Yes, please um, do. <laughs> you will not be disappointed. Will not be and we are just so grateful. Happy belated Father's Day to yes. all the fathers out there. Enjoy it. Enjoy yes. it. If you got a man, I hope you treated him right. It's not too late. <laughs> it's not too late. It, yeah. it sure is not. So thank you for watching. Mom's Actually, where motherhood, motherhood meets sisterhood. sisterhood. Hey, Mom. What's up? Hey, Ma. What's up? Hey, Ma. What's up? Hey, Ma. What's up? Hey, Ma. What's up?